بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد وأوحى ربك إلى النحل فيه شفاء للناس The value of the knowledge of Nubuat cannot be quantified There are many secrets to the universe which is in the ilm and the knowledge of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu Ammanualuhu through Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decoded the secrets of the universe. Scientists, scientists, researchers, experts can do research upon research. They will never ever come close to the knowledge of Nubuat with regards to Akhira and with regards to Dunya. They may correct some formulas but they won't come close to the knowledge of Nubuwa. So we are fortunate, the people of Iman, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has empowered us with this ilm to solve our problems, our issues in dunya and akhirat. We are not negating the research of scientists and experts, but we are saying that we should have yaqeen in what Allah and His Rasul have said, more yaqeen than we have on what the people of Batil and what the people of the world have to say. With regards to honey, it is a cure for mankind. In one riwayat of Ibn Majah, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu mentions that man laik al asl, whoever licks honey for three days every month lam yusibhu no serious great calamity will befall that person so if we can make it a routine every day forget three days but every day the first thing in the morning when we consume besides the fasting days should be honey even while we are fasting, when we have iftar with kajur and water, then try to make it a routine to have honey first. So, we have the knowledge, it is about who's going to practice. So, another riwayat that uh, Amir bin Malik sent to Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, يَسْأَلُهُ الدَّوَاءُ وَالشِّفَاءُ مِنْ دَعْ نَزَلَ بِهِ He had become ill. So Nabi salam gave the reply and sent for him honey. So a lot of narrations have encouraged the utilization of honey. وَلَا لِلْمَرِيدِ إِلَّا الْعَسْلِ And for the sick people, utilize honey for their cure. If somebody offers you itar perfume or honey, then don't refuse it. These, this, these are great bounties and ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the riwayat of Aisha radiyallahu anha, kana Abu Sharab ilayhi al asl, the most beloved drink was honey. Ma tulibat dawa'u bi shayin afdala min sharbati aslin. So, there isn't a cure more virtuous, more beneficial than honey as well. Awwalu ni'ma turfawa anil arla asl, the first bounty that will be lifted from the ummah will be honey. One meaning is it will be terminally lifted, terminally uh, taken away and secondly is that the value of this bounty will be lifted as well. So it is a shifa, it is a cure. One person who had serious injuries and he decided to utilize it. The doctor that did the treatment after seeing the patient, he said, this has healed faster than any of my patients. 
in the last 40 years. And if you look at uh, history as well in Europe, in, 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 in the rest of the world, it was used in, in battlefields for soldiers who had infected wounds. Even if you go into World War I, honey was used for healing the wounded in a battle. After time of evolution, antibiotics were discovered and uh, the cure and the utilization of honey decreased. And because of modern medicine, the, the old age remedies were abandoned and importance was not highlighted. So somebody told the bee that you make the honey, yet the human beings take all your honey. Why do you continue? Why don't you give up? Why aren't you? You must be very sad. So the bee used to say, its reply was, they can steal my honey, but they can't steal my art. They can't steal my art. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired the bee. What a complex process and what lessons we can take. So try to go organic, try to go raw, try to get all the ingredients with the comb in the honey. Then some of the components in honey, whether it's carbohydrates, which regulates blood glucose, uh, it m regulates the use of proteins and manages energy, breaks down fatty acids and uh, sugars, dietary fiber, fat, protein, there's no fat in the honey. So that's a plus. Then vitamin B2, which is a vitamin which is no needed for overall growth. It helps the body break down carbohydrates, proteins and fats. It produces the energy. Oxygen for the body is needed. It's an antioxidant. People don't want to get old quickly. Honey is an anti-aging element. And it plays an important role in improving vision disorders like uh, cataract, eye fatigue. And uh, it has been known also that uh, B2 is important in reducing the risk of cancer. Also, it helps in headaches, migraines. This is what just scientists and researchers are saying. Vitamin B3, an important nutrient for the body to function properly, it lowers high cholesterol levels in the body. It treats respiratory or vascular disorders. So we see during COVID for, for a, a remedy between the honey and the black seed, etc. Then there's vitamin B5, vitamin B6, B9, vitamin C, calcium, which strengthens the bones, the teeth, regulates muscle contractions. Iron, which is an important mineral for growth and development for proteins in the, the, the blood, RBCs, and oxygen to all parts of the body, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, zinc. So these are all ingredients in honey, which researchers have highlighted are very important constituents for the human body. And then people who have respiratory symptoms and normally, so in, in, in modern medicine, researchers have done tests where people had infections of the throat, the larynx, bronchi, large air passages, windpipe, and uh, even tonsillitis, laryngitis, flu. So researchers at the uh, University of Oxford decided to do tests with regards to honey and they did 14 clinical trials from honey and other normal medical medicines which are used from painkillers to cough suppressants to antihistamines and they took 1761 patients of different ages and they administered honey in this medication and the results of their tests showed that honey was more effective in treatment of all these respiratory disorders and it was beneficial and it is 
a more important reason to use it as an antibiotic for prescription. And then people have wounds, so a Norwegian uh, researchers have done studies and they found it that it kills all stains of bacteria in wounds. So if a person gets an injury, then uh, they should apply di directly the honey to the wound, then dress it with a sterile gauze bandage and leave it for 12 to 24 to 36 hours. We should remember that the darker the honey, the stronger the antibacterial, antioxidant power. So we get the light honeys with the light flavors also, but try to balance it as well. Then people have dandruff issues, so honey is a quick fix for chronic dermatitis, dandruff, and uh, even a person has itching for relief on the skull. So normally, Honey is mixed with olive oil, uh, castor oil, and that is uh, rubbed in the skull. Then for burns and treatments, Russian and Chinese doctors use a cream made of honey, cod liver oil, and that reduced the pain of the wounds. It increased the healing, healing and it was preventing a preventative for infection and blisters. So it's antibacterial, anti-inflammatory properties for burns. The National Institute of Health have done research and they've shown why it is beneficial. Sometimes a person has sunburn as well. So a teaspoon of honey with olive oil mixed with lemon juice and it's placed on that area. Then it boosts the blood. So I clean the research and they found that to prevent the low white blood cell count, whether it's normal or person goes to chemotherapy, the utilization of honey, two teaspoons of honey daily before chemotherapy and after chemotherapy may be beneficial with nila. Then people who have allergies, so try to take the local honey in your area, which is the closest honey farm, and try to include all the other ingredients, whether it's the pollen, the wax, the hive a combination, all of this may be beneficial. Person has toothache, mix honey with clove. Person has acid reflux, high cholesterol, use honey mixed with apple cider. A person has insomnia. So they found that a person when he goes to bed, they should try to have honey before going to bed as well. Then, Doctors and researchers have seen the benefits of uh, utilizing honey in the eye as well. So corneal infection, chronic swelling of the eye, inflammation, dryness of the conjunctiva, viral infection of the cornea, chronic infection in the eyelid. And uh, research has been, have been done, and one, one of the researchers, we have done an in-depth study, they found that for corneal infection, 86% patient improved. So it was very important in the testing also that original honey to be used, but bees that were fed on water and sugar, the results were not so positive like natural honey. Then Viral corneal infection, 83% improvement, chronic inflammation, 85%, inflammation of the eye, 87% improvement. So you look at an average of 80 to 90% increase in benefit for utilizing honey. So even an English surgeon in an hospital in England did research and his research shows that it helps tissue to regrow and to heal quickly, where it doesn't leave a trace or a scar. So Dr. Ablaziz Ismail, a senior medical scientist, he also showed that honey utilized, whether orally or intravenously, has been beneficial for biological disorders, diseases, 
and uh, infections and diseases in the liver, stomach, intestines, etc. Even up to brain tumors, they found it beneficial. People who have in, in, uh, anemia, babies that have anemia, they've advised to put honey in the milk. Children who have a bad wetting wet problem, to give them honey before they go sleep because it calms the nerves. Treating infected wounds and burns, treating stomach and duodenal ulcers, remedy for colds, flus, throat infections, COVID. Bithnillah, everything we need to turn to Allah and have yaqeen in Allah. Treating chronic liver infection, um, Honey also now recently has been used for cosmetic skin preparations. So mixtures of honey, lemon and other ingredients have been used to increase the radiance of the skin, the purity of the skin, to make the hair grow, to stop hair loss, treating damaged hair, treating freckles, and even whitening the teeth and protecting the gums. So Alhamdulillah, we use the miswak and we use honey as well. So to whiten the teeth, to, to, to dumb and to overpower bacterial infection on the teeth, you can rub honey on the teeth and on the gums. This will be every morning. And it has been proven to be beneficial to protect the teeth, to protect the gums. Sometimes uh, with honey, olive oil is added. Then certain face masks just to rejuvenate the skin. Uh, various remedies have been set out in different, different types of ingredients. But uh, the lesson to remember is that We've got so much influence of alternate medicine and have left the Benaboi. So you're going to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for a certain ingredient which has been marketed well, promoted well, and we get caught by the trap. Whether it's the trap of losing weight, whether it's the trap of anti-aging, whether it's the trap of uh, trying to make a person more healthy, health conscious, let us start having yaqeen on the remedies given to us by Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The amal for today is the reward for protecting one's gaze. In nadratu sahmum masmumum min sihami iblis. That looking, not protecting the gaze, is an arrow, is a venomous, is a poisonous, is a toxic arrow from the arrows of Iblis. Whoever leaves looking at haram abdal tuhu imanan yajidu halawatahu fi qalbihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change his Iman and center the Iman such that he will get the sweetness of Iman in his heart. So according to our Shaykh Hazrat Maulana Abdul Hamid Sahib Damid Barakatuhum, he says the husband leaves the house and he looks at all the biryani outside. And he ate the biryani. Now when he comes home, the biryani is this filled, he's got indigestion, so he doesn't look at the biryani. So most of the sicknesses and the problems that we cause in the world is when we don't follow deen. So protect the gaze, whether it's physically looking at women, whether it is on a billboard, whether it is in a magazine, whether it's online, whether people say we watch sport, but the audience is an attraction as well. So the most attractive of the lot will come. So protecting the gaze from all avenues. ثَلَاثَةٌ لَا تَرَوْا أَعْيُنُهُمُ النَّارِ Three people the eyes will not touch the fire of Jahannam. One of them is وَعِينٌ كَفَّتْ أَنْ مَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ The one who protects the gaze from Haram. So in the olden days when travelers used to come to our houses, then in the masjid we should take them and bring them home. So as it explains that when we travel in, we put our brights on to see better. So he says nowadays, 
when there's a na-mahram female, then we put our brights on and we want to look properly. It's the first gaze. So we say the first gaze is permissible na'udhu billah. So we look properly. Then we lower our gaze after looking properly. And he said when a visitor comes nowadays, everybody lowers their gazes. We're supposed to put our brights on when a visitor comes and dumb our lights when we see a na-mahram female. But he said the zamana is inverted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen.